Now to the new movement, brewing up diversity. The craft beer boom has turned up breweries and tap rooms all across the country, but people of color still make up a tiny portion of brewers today. Now efforts are underway to change that. My, the Michael James Jackson Foundation awards scholarships to people of color looking to make a career in beer and distilling. And in honor of Black History Month, Garrett Oliver, a founder of the foundation and a master brewer at Brooklyn Brewery, is here to tell us all about that. Garrett, thank you so much for being here. I want to start with a little bit of a history lesson. Can you talk about how people of color have been involved with brewing over the years? Well, one thing that people don't really realize is that uh, people in Africa have been brewing for 5,000 years. This is where beer is actually originally from. Uh, so there are longstanding traditions up and down the continent, east and west, uh, in every single society for traditional beer making. And much of that goes on still today. Once you ended up with Africans uh, uh, in the Americas, uh, they did the majority of the brewing during times of enslavement and, and thereafter. And it's only really later that we come to think of beer somehow as this European thing. It's natural that we are brewing beers mostly in a European idiom, given the background of the country. But actually, people around the world brew beer and are interested in beer because it's pretty interesting. So why are so few people of color in beer today? Well, you're seeing people interested in everything, right? Whether it's natural wine or it's uh, more interesting food or it's bourbon, which also used to be produced largely by African-Americans. So people are interested because there's a lot to know and a lot to have fun with. But so far, you have a lot of people who are left out, both culturally and you actually need a lot of education uh, in order to achieve the higher realms of, uh, of beer making. And that education is very expensive. Garrett, how did you get into the industry? I did the old fashioned way. I, I apprenticed, but first I moved to England. I was stage managing rock bands in the early 80s. Uh, and I had all these wonderful beers traveling throughout Europe and vice beer in Germany and uh, sour wild fermented beers in Belgium and the wonderful ales, you know, naturally fermented ales that we had in England. And then I got back and they said the same three or four names that we knew of thin, yellow, fizzy beer that I didn't want anymore. And so I started making beer at home, not because I wanted to make beer, but because that was the only way to have some beer. So, uh, uh, you know, these days, of course, craft beer is everywhere, but not in every community. You used to stage manage rock bands, and now you are a master beer brewer. I think if there's a prize for my coolest <laughs> guest, you would win it, Garrett. I I took, I took the Ramones bowling. Okay, oh my that's, God. That's, All right, we have to have you on another about. time to tell that story. Uh, but I do want to get to the foundation. So tell me about the Michael James Jackson Foundation. Uh, this year's the third year I know that you have awarded scholarships. So how did it come about and how's it going? It's going really, really well. But look, I mean, the fact of the matter is that we are all in some way uh, uh, engaged in this endeavor. I have sat in the brewmaster's chair for over 30 years, and I realized I didn't have people of color coming to me looking for brewing jobs. And I wondered, well, why should that be? And I thought, maybe they're just not interested. And then I realized, okay, I require two to the three years of experience, fair, or a certificate showing me that you already have uh, this education. Well, if you have less than 1% of people uh, uh, of color in brew houses in the first place, then who has two to three years of experience? And if the certificate costs $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 for tuition, and we know that African Americans, for example, have 10% of the family assets of European Americans, you, you see that you're getting a catch-22. There actually is no way for these people to show up in front of you with these qualifications. So all we're doing at the Michael James Jackson Foundation is toggling one switch for people who are clearly showing a, a, a commitment to brewing and a, a, a real aptitude for it. We are able to remove that financial barrier. You're flipping a switch that is changing lives, no doubt. And, and before I let you go, Garrett, not that we need to add to your cool factor here, but I know you brewed a beer with Run the Jewels. So we got to know, what are Killer Mike and LP's favorite beers? 
Uh, you know, well, now, you know, it's the beer that, uh, uh, you know, that we made with them, 36-inch chain, which, it, believe me, it was a lot of fun to see that flying out at Madison Square Garden. Just blended a wonderful bourbon with our friends at Pinhook. You can look for that, and that's also helping fund these scholarships. So we're announcing eight more scholarships this week, and it's rock and roll. Awesome. Garrett Oliver, thank you for coming on. Cheers to you. I hope to be able to sample your beer very soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.